Hey, so today we're going to take a look at something that people seem to find confusing. I know I did, uh, you know, many years ago when I was starting out. And it's one of those things that's kind of uh, made to seem kind of uh, complicated or mysterious in some way. And we all kind of try to avoid learning it really or using it. It's actually really, really straightforward. It's modes. It's really just something that you probably already are kind of playing without knowing it. And so what I'm hoping to do today is... Uh, to sort of talk through modes a little bit uh, in a sort of real-world application kind of way uh, and to hopefully help you make sense of it. So if you know how to play a major scale, you know how to play modes. You're probably already accidentally doing it and without realising it. Uh, so it's not a complicated thing. You haven't got to learn new patterns here necessarily. That's something you can do later on and you may want to do. But for now, for the purposes of explaining it, uh, we're just going to look at one pattern good old major scale, three notes per string. The reason I pick this one always as these examples is it's kind of visually really good. It's laid out really nicely. We can kind of see everything fairly easily. It's kind of symmetrical. And um, and also it kind of falls under the fingers nicely and gives us lots of patterns we can play. Okay, major scale. We're gonna think of it as degrees, okay? We're gonna lay it out this way. We're gonna think of it as one to seven. Okay, there's the seven notes we're going to use. Okay, we'll double them up obviously into the second octave. Okay, so we'll go from one to seven again. Yeah, and I'll fill in on the top there as well. Okay, so two octaves there in that three, three notes per string pattern that we're using. Okay, but we need to think of it as seven different notes. Okay, so if we start from the one of the major scale, our root note. Okay, that is the major scale or what gets called the Ionian mode. If we start from the second degree and we work up to that second degree an octave up and we get this sound. Okay, that's what's called the Dorian mode. Okay, so it's the, the, the mode built on the second degree. If we start on the third. Okay, we get what's called the Phrygian mode. And on each degree going upwards, they're numbered, yeah? And they all have a name and they're all given, a, a assigned a name, a modal name. Okay, so, so far, Ionian or the normal major scale. Second degree is Dorian, third degree Phrygian, fourth is Lydian, fifth is Mixolydian, sixth is Aeolian, or what we also know as our natural minor scale, okay? Yeah, so if we started from the sixth degree, yeah, in the key of G, that would give us E minor, so the relative minor natural minor scale seventh degree locrian okay and then we're back to one again we're back to the start okay so just a quick note then on chords at the same time it works in exactly the same way with sort of progressions okay chord progressions if we know that we, we have a major scale and on each of those degrees is built a certain chord type you know so in the key of g we've got you know g major seven and then on the two and three minor seven chords and then on the four a major seven chord again on the five a seven chord yeah a dominant seven on the sixth minor seven again on the seventh degree half diminished and then we're back to the one again okay well if we started from the second degree yeah and we were going to play essentially in a second degree a dorian mode and use that as our starting point we'd have a different set of chords or the chords I should say would be all the same as we've just described but we'd be starting from that new point okay so it really boils down to this with both scales or modes and the chord progressions it's really about where your starting point is it's where you start from and what your focal point is that's all that matters okay so if we're playing in a normal major key okay G major that root note G there, the one, that's our one, okay? Okay, that's our focal point. Likewise with the chords, that chord built on the one, the G major seven, yeah? That's our focal point, that's the chord, that's the one chord in any progressions, okay? All we do when we move, you know, up to another focal point, yeah? We move to playing modally, you know, is we will shift what we think of as our start point, okay? Okay, so example, if we then move up to the second degree and play from there, all we've got to do really is we can still use this G major scale pattern, you know, the parent scale it comes from. But if we think now of A, you know, the second degree, yeah, as our starting point, 
that's our focal point. We've kind of moved the dial along. That's now what we think of as one in our scale, okay? Yeah. Okay, so a real world example then. Let's, let's, let's look at that quickly. So uh, a Dorian uh, example would be something like Oyo Komova by uh, Santana, okay? So... Okay. It's basically kind of A minor, but with a different note somewhere. It's got a slightly different characteristic. Well, it's basically an A Dorian. So all we're doing there is we could use the G major scale yeah, for that whole song and the chords built from it. We've just changed for that song what our one is. Our one is the two chord you know, in G major. We shift our focus now and make that our new one chord. Okay, so... You know, that would be our one chord. If we were going through the whole sequence, again, that two chord would now be, you know, the minor seven there. The three chord would be this major, you know, major seven. Four chord would be this seven chord, you know. Hence where we get that, that dominant seven on the four, you know. The five chord would now be minor, minor seven. The six chord would now be minus seven flat five, and the seven chord would be major, and we'd be back to the one. Obviously, in that song, you know, it's a song; it's not an exercise, so he doesn't use all of the chords in that key. So we don't; it doesn't map out in the same way. You just hear that that chord progression. It's only really using three chords from that progression there, but the notes. It's got that raised sixth. It's got that A minor-ish sort of quality to it, but it's got that raised sixth. Okay, so that's how it's used in the real world. We don't have to, you know, map out everything from the mode, but there's a subtle difference there. Another way of approaching that would be just to say, okay, well, look, I'm going to think of it as A minor, but I'm just going to tweak that note. That's it. You know, I'm just, that's another way to approach it as a mode. We don't have to take this approach of mapping everything and, seeing it in full detail, you can really just tweak uh, one or two notes to sort of fit. And as long as you don't play any clash notes with those, you know, you're playing in that mode and you're playing something that fits with it. Okay, so let's take another example and let's shift up and start at a different start point. Instead of Dorian, instead of second degree, let's start at the fifth note, which in this case is D in the key of G, but whichever, whichever key you're playing in, if you start at the fifth degree, yeah, and carry on up from there, you're playing what's called the Mixolydian mode. That's the, the mode built on the fifth degree, okay, of the major scale. So if we're thinking about our old parent scale, G major, we're going to shift our focus now, again, in exactly the same way as we did before, now shifting our focus to the fifth degree. This is now our new one chord, our new one in the scale. Yeah, that's how we're going to think of it. That's, that's going to become our new scale. Of course, if we're improvising, we could still just use the notes for simplicity, use the notes from the G major scale. We can still use a pattern we know, a G major scale pattern. If we think it through a little bit and we realize that, well, actually, look, you know, D mixolydian is just a G major scale and I already know a G major here or maybe I know another major one up here. I'll just use that scale framework, that pattern that I've learned on the board. I've, all I've got to do is shift my focus now and think about chord tones and the scale tones now from this new vocal point you know with this d now as our root note okay so instead of thinking g yeah, we're now thinking of this is our new one we're still going to use all the same note but we're now thinking okay well what would the chord tones be one three five seven okay yeah we get that dominant seven arpeggio and we're thinking about our focal point now being that D, you know, for improvising. Again, the chords, same thing. The chords will still be the same chords we used in the key of G major, all in that same order, but we're now starting from the fifth degree, that dominant seven chord as our one, okay? Real world example of something that's mixolydian that might be familiar to a lot of people would be something like uh, Sweet Home Alabama by Leonard Skinner. Okay, so... Okay, so we have a D, we have a C at nine, yeah, and a G, okay. 
So it's all the same language as G major, but the focal point becomes D, yeah? Everything's starting and resolving back at D, yeah? Uh, again, as we talked about with the Santana example, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to think of it in modal terms to play it. If you listen to the original track, really what's happening is, again, is, you know, it's essentially feels like a D major-ish sort of feel, but it's got that chord belt on the flat seven, which throws things out a bit if you are soloing. You have to just be careful about, you know, and thoughtful about the notes that you're using. So you don't have to think modally. You can just think, okay, look, I'm kind of in D major, but, but I've got to remember we're playing a flat, you know, a flat seven. We're playing a C natural instead of a C sharp. Yeah. In, if you listen to a lot of the the lines and the fills and the solos and stuff in that song, they're kind of playing in sort of D major pentatonic stuff a lot and D blues, you know, major blues uh, kind of lines. They're just being careful not to land anything on the major seven and to sort of fall in line with that, you know, uh, a flat seven. The thing we're most familiar with doing, I suppose, is thinking about, you know, a relative major and minor, you know, and, and that's all you're doing when you're uh, thinking about the other modes. Okay, so we're used to thinking, well, G major, okay. Yeah, well, that's, you know, E minor is the relative minor, and we, you know, we're more familiar with the idea, more comfortable with the idea that, you know, they share the same seven notes, okay, and it's just about where I start from. There's lots of songs that, you know, pop songs are very commonly shift back and forth between, you know, the major and their relative minor within a song, and we get used to the idea that your melodic lines will kind of reflect that, and you'll play, you know, something that's kind of much more... G major-ish and then something that's a bit more something that's a bit more you know the relative minor so E minor you know within the same song but that's all that's happening when we look at the other modes you know within a key as well you know uh, we just got to do the same thing just switch our focus to that note and that becomes our new root okay so G major you know the one we're in Okay, I'm going to shift now, we're going to think Dorian, okay, so same notes, okay, I'm just really trying to pick out now, minor third, third's the fifth, seven, yeah, it's, and really a lot of this stuff you'll start to find will again fall within other scales that you're more familiar with anyway, so immediately there what I'm doing by accident you know, is picking out sort of A minor pentatonic lines here. I'm still sort of thinking of this parent G major scale and switching now to a focus on sort of A Dorian, if you like, you know. But if I'm doing that, I'm overlapping an awful lot with something else I already know. You know, that A minor pentatonic shape, okay? Okay, so Mixolydian, same thing. We'll shift here to the fifth degree. Okay, so root third, fifth, flat seven. Okay, so again, I just shift my attention onto those notes if I'm soloing it. 